Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for joining us. My name is Maddie Brown. I am a senior assistant director of admission at Gettysburg College. And first and foremost, I want to congratulate um, those admitted to join us here in the class of 2025. We are so excited to welcome you to campus this fall. Um, and thanks again for joining us uh, today, where we are going to hear from some amazing current Gettysburg students and current Gettysburg faculty members about our political science programs and offerings here. Um, so I do want to make note that we will not be using the chat feature. Instead, please direct your questions to the Q&A um, section at the bottom of your screen. And we are recording this. Um, so again, thank you for joining. And without further ado, I am going to hand it over to Caroline Hartzell. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us for this session. Um, and I just want to say on behalf of the political science department that we would be delighted to welcome you um, as majors to, to the department. Um, I think I'll start with a little bit of background on the political science major um, and department. Uh, the first thing I would point out is in fact that the political science major at Gettysburg College is the largest major at the college. Um, that's kind of interesting because that's not generally the case at most liberal arts colleges across the country. Um, but there are a few factors which we think um, help account for this, besides, of course, the fact that we have a very engaged faculty and very engaged students, and that really helps attract other people to the major. Um, some of the features, some of the factors that contribute to the popularity of this major um, are the following. Um, one is our location. So um, although we're not really close to Washington, D.C., we are close enough that you can drive there in about an hour and a half. Um, that means that a lot of our students actually build connections to Washington, D.C. Um, through a variety of means. Um, one is that we have two study um, abroad or off-campus study programs in, located in Washington, D.C. Um, that are very popular with students beyond political science majors, but a number of majors participate in those. Um, those both of those study um, off-campus programs um, involve a significant commitment to an internship. So in one program, students um, have an internship three days a week. In the other program, they have an internship four days a week and then usually take classes at night. So a lot of students actually get a lot of, um, you know, experience connected to the major by studying in Washington, D.C. Other students do summer internships, for example, and um, have connections to D.C. that feed back into their, their experiences as a major as well. Another thing is we actually have a really large alumni network. Um, and part of that alumni network is located in Washington, DC. In fact, the Poli Sci alumni network in Washington, DC is really, really active. They do a lot of programming. They invite faculty um, to um, you know, give talks back down in DC, which is something we can easily do given our location. Um, and so they're really active and they are very generous with their time in terms of, um, you know, the interests of our majors. Um, what this alumni network extends beyond Washington, D.C. So just to give a quick example, I'm teaching a class this semester called uh, North-South Dialogue that's on the politics of global inequality. And actually, Anthony is in that class this semester. Um, and earlier this semester, I invited three former alumni, three alumni, uh, former students of mine who had all taken the class. Um, and one of them works for the State Department, so he zoomed in from um, the Dominican Republic. Another one lives in Singapore, and she works for um, Save the Children, so she zoomed in from Singapore. And another student um, is now working with a, pub a pharmaceutical company, so she zoomed in from New York. And they all talked about their experiences um, at one time or another in the development field. So again, we uh, can make use of our alumni network in our major, and I think that's really engaging for our students. Um, another big reason the political science major is so popular is because of the existence of the Eisenhower Institute at the college. EI is not not meant to be the sole province of political science. And in fact, efforts are being made to get other majors at the college to really take part in the work of Eisenhower Institute. Um, Juliana has connections with EI, so she can talk about that later. But it is the case that a number of our students participate in EI programming and um, 
that that synergy between the major and EI also contributes to the popularity of the major. And then finally, I think another thing I would say about why political science is so popular is that students really see that majoring in political science makes a variety of careers possible for them. So a variety of career tracks. It's not that if you major in political science, you're automatically going to work on the Hill, for example, in Washington, DC, right? Although we have students that are enamored of that idea and go and do that kind of work. Um, if you take a look at the political science website that on the college's um, webpage, um, we've recently updated the alumni portion of it, and you can get just a cross section, an idea of some of the careers that students have gone into. I mentioned State Department and Save the Children as a couple of examples, but we've had, we have students who work for CNN. We have students that go on to law school and become law professors, for example. We have students that go on and get PhDs in political science and come back and be, they are now a political science uh, professor in our own department, um, Professor Reed. So any a large number of careers are possible. And what political science majors say is they appreciate the analytical skills that we really emphasize in this major and that they see that those travel far. And those are exactly the kind of skills, by the way, that employers are looking from, from liberal arts colleges. So we really elevate that and students alumni, you can read some of their reflections, really appreciate those skills and talk about how those have helped them in their careers. Um, so that's just a little bit of background on the political science, the popularity of the political science major. We're a department of 11 faculty members. Um, we uh, represent a, a, the major at the college is structured around four subfields. So for example, I teach international relations. And then um, more specifically, I teach international political economy courses. Professor Bottery falls under American government and you have, can have a clue of his specialty from his background there. Um, and he can, he'll go over that in a little bit of detail in a little while. Um, so we have 11 faculty members in international relations, American government, comparative politics and political theory. Um, the, the faculty members work closely with students in a variety of ways. Um, beyond just you know the obvious interactions around teaching classes. Uh, a number of us are active or are sponsors of a number of student organizations, for example. So there's a lot of intersection between the, the faculty members in the department and um, the students in the major. Um, I'm just gonna take another minute or two here to say a little bit about the structure of the political science major, and then I'm gonna turn it over to um, Professor Bottery. Um, the political science major, I like to describe it as a pyramid. Um, and the pyramid at the base of the pyramid are introductory level courses, 100 level courses. And of the four subfields I mentioned, IR, American government, comparative politics and political theory, you take three, you choose your own choice, three of those four subfields and you take a, a 100 level course in each of them. And then you start building up the pyramid. So. Out of those three that you took, you then choose two and you take 200 level classes in them. And then you take 300 level classes in, the, in them. And then at the top of the pyramid in your senior year, you choose one of those subfields and you take a capstone course in them. Um, there are two additional courses to the, to the political science pyramid. One is a methods course required of all students, part of that analytical capacity emphasis that we have. Um, and then the other is kind of a gimme, uh, a, a class that you choose, another extra class that you choose that you take at the two or 300 level. Many students uh, take that class abroad in studying abroad, for example, if they do that. Um, I think Juliana can speak to that as well. Um, our major, a number of students double major with the political science major, some of probably the most popular connections, although you can major in anything and double, you know, double major in anything with political science, but are the public policy program um, and the international and global studies program. Um, and uh, Anthony can speak to the public policy um, major and Juliana can speak to the IGS major. So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Professor Bottery. Thanks, Professor Hartzell. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon, everyone. Uh, we had one question in the q and I wanted to address real quick. So the question was about the percentage of students that actually study in DC um, or any of the abroad programs. Um, perhaps, Maddie, if you could pull up the percentage of Gettysburgians who do study abroad. I know it's, it's quite high. Um, and I don't know of a scenario 
I, I know it happens, but it's more, it's far more often that folks study abroad and they're able to transfer back courses. So it's not just the DC program uh, where you go and engage in, in life in DC. Um, there are abroad programs also where you take coursework and you're able to transfer back a course or two uh, that counts toward your political science major uh, requirements. Um, and you know we, we can't stress that enough the importance of studying abroad it's it's awfully beneficial and students come back you know completely changed um, we highly recommend it and i know the percentage is quite high what exactly that is um hopefully we can circle back to that before this is over with but uh, i'm scott bottery i study uh, american politics and specifically uh, judicial politics um uh, Supreme Court judicial behavior. Um, I'm also one of the pre-law advisors here at the college. Um, I came to Gettysburg, oh my gosh, what is it now? Uh, I think this is my fifth year, which seems uh, a bit scary because it feels like it was yesterday. Um, but I remember when I was applying to jobs, uh, on the academic job market. And um, the academic job market is not particularly fun because you kind of just are at the whim of who's hiring. And I remember um, when I went on a job interview at a big state school and um, they were showing me this new lecture hall that they had just built. And it, it, uh, it's housed a thousand students and you had to go through a turnstile like at Disney World in order to get to class and you swiped your card and that's how attendance was taken. And they were showing me this as if it was a selling point for this institution. And I thought, well, you're, you're talking to the wrong guy here. This is not my, not my bag of tea. And my very next interview was with Gettysburg. And I remember arriving to campus and thinking, this is it, this is the place I wanna be. And I was lucky enough to get the job offer and very quickly accepted it. So my time here has been wonderful. Um, it's, it fits my strong suits, and I think the type of students who want to come to a liberal arts college, um, you'll find exactly what you're looking for here. Um, <clears throat> but with regard to pre-law, um, I kind of wear two hats because I'm a political science professor, um, and I believe strongly in the merits and benefits of this study, um, but also the pre-law advising. Um, I don't consider myself a recruiter to be, you know, to, to go looking for students um, to go to law school. But I'm here to help you individually on a one-on-one -on -one basis if you are interested in it. Um, you certainly don't have to be a, pre, uh, a political science major to go to law school, but it just so happens that lots of folks who wanna to go to law school are interested in politics. And so you get this Venn diagram that's substantially overlapped. Um, and so you have access to me within the department um, to talk about all things law school. And I will say for the size of Gettysburg, um, the number of students that we send to, to law school is remarkably robust um, comparatively to other similarly situated institutions. Uh, our percentage is much, much higher. Um, and we're getting really successful at it. And this is not a comment, certainly not a comment on my skills. It's more a comment on Gettysburgians who are just you know, really fantastic student scholars and they're getting into really great law schools. Um, this next season, we have students going to Harvard, Virginia, Vanderbilt, um, Georgetown, George Washington, and you know, that's just to name a few. Um, I can, I'd be very happy to supply you with more information if you're interested in the types of schools that they're going to. Um, but back to the political science department, I really think that we hit above our weight, so to speak. I think the type of scholars that we have here are, are really substantial scholars. Um, and I think that the type of atmosphere that you'll find in the department is a really good um, constructive one. So you're never gonna find our doors closed and us unaccessible. Um, we're, we have an open door policy. Once we get back on campus fully, um, we encourage it. Uh, we, we, we strongly encourage it. Um, and I think that uh, parlays nicely into this idea of advising. When you're a political science major, you have access to, our, to your advisor. Um, the one-on-one -on -one access is you know, a byproduct or a benefit of liberal arts colleges, right? You're not just a number to us. We know your name, we know your face, we're glad to see you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and with that sort of one-on-one -on -one access, um, 
we also have opportunities for uh, conducting scholarship with faculty, um, not only with faculty, but with your own scholarship. Faculty will help you as much as possible. Um, and we just started a new program called the Jacober Scholars Program. And that program is kind of our honors track. And so with the honors track, um, students who are rising seniors that are over a GPA of a certain threshold um, have the opportunity to apply to be a Jacober Scholar. And they work one-on-one -on -one with the faculty mentor to produce a significant piece of scholarship. Um, and at the end of their senior year, uh, we will have a poster session open to the campus and community at large uh, where you present your findings. Um, and along the way, there are opportunities to present your paper at conferences and things like that. So I think the opportunities here are significant. Um, as Professor Hartzell said, we have close connections with EI. Uh, within EI, there's the Fielding Center. Uh, for presidential research. Um, we're closely connected to that also. So I think the opportunities here are, it's just tremendous. There's a tremendous upside uh, to the, de the department and being a major here. Um, I think that's all I had. Do we wanna uh, introduce our students, Anthony and Juliana? Juliana, you wanna introduce yourself first? Sure, um, so my name is Juliana. Um, I am a senior. I'm at Gettysburg. I'm studying political science, um, international and global studies and French. Um, and I do a lot on campus, so I can um, give a brief overview of that. And then if you have any questions for me, um, feel free to ask about anything I talk about or anything else you wanna know. Um, so I studied abroad last year in Tunisia um, for a semester. And um, while I was there, I was able to complete um, like an independent research project, um, which was really cool. Um, and I studied politics and religious integration while I was there. So some of my classes counted towards um, the political science major as well as my IGS major. Um, and then I've had an internship. Um, last summer, I interned at the National Defense University Foundation, um, as well as the Institute for National Strategic Studies. Um, and then on campus, I work um, as the orientation coordinator for residential and first year programs um, at the Eisenhower Institute um, as communications coordinator and also as the managing editor of Ike's Anvil, which is like our student um, public policy forum uh, where students can submit original um, op-eds and then we publish those and kind of try and start to get a conversation going on campus and off campus as well. Um, and then I'm also uh, I was the PLA for, our PLA is Peer Learning Associate, so um, we're kind of teaching assistants, um, is what you would call it at like a larger university, um, and I was the PLA for political science methods. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about what I do. Um, so if you have any questions about any of that, I'm happy to talk about Eisenhower Institute, um, their programs, studying abroad, getting an internship, any of that. And I, can, I guess I'll pass it off to Anthony now. All right, hello everyone. Um, my name is Anthony. I'm a sophomore here in Gettysburg College, I'm majoring in political science and public policy with a, and I'm also pursuing a minor in data science. And if you're, if you're wondering, I'm from California, so it's a pretty long distance from here to uh, California, but yeah, here I am. Um, and as a student on campus, I'm involved in, I've been involved with the Eisenhower Institute, especially, specifically their Middle East program and also their environmental leadership program. And with the Middle East program, I got to actually visit the DC for one of the policy making conference back in like fall 2019, I believe. So um, I, 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 it's a truly memorable experience. Well, and then the, I'm also an editor for a newly established journal uh, that is established under political science department called Gladfield Gazette. Um, so it's where students can submit their um, articles, more specifically current event analysis uh, under you know, IR or comparative politics, American government or, or political theory, basically the four subfields of political science here on campus. Uh, under political science department. Um, so in this upcoming summer, uh, I'll be interning at uh, Motion Pictures Association as a government affairs intern uh, this summer of 2021. I did not know that, Anthony. That sounds cool. <laughs> um, okay, so if people have questions for us, uh, you can submit them to the Q&A and we'll be happy to, to answer those. 
Um, there's, I don't know, Juliana, did you see this one? How did that, yeah. Eisenhower Institute? Okay. Um, yeah, so I think, so I participated in um, the program Anthony was talking about, which is Contours of the Middle East and North Africa. Um, and so with that, um, I guess, so I took that, um, I did that program my sophomore year. Um, and then I got so interested in the Middle East that I decided, and North Africa, that I decided to study abroad in Tunisia. Um, and so I found that, you know, what I learned in that program and um, all of the people that I met, we, yeah, I tries to bring in um, a lot of like a variety of speakers. So that includes ambassadors, um, scholars, people that work at the UN, all, all of that. And I think through that, um, I was really able to kind of get, um, I guess, get excited about uh, studying the Middle East and um, get that foundation. Um, so I was prepared to actually go to Tunisia and um, do my own research there, which is really cool. Um, and then I also find that at the Eisenhower Institute, the way that the programs are structured and um, Anthony can talk about this as well. I think um, they're very good at um, getting you to like think critically about things. And I think the political science department in general is just good at that. Um, and so I noticed that, you know, after I took, after I participated in that program, um, I was bringing that knowledge into the classroom. And I think the two kind of work together very nicely um, because of that. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, there were, there's a few questions that kind of, I can tackle just together. Um, so with regard to the question about the, the intertwining of political science and EI, it's, it's a lot like what I said with with regard to pre-law, it just so happens that lots of people who wanna do and get involved with EI are also political science majors. It is not a requirement to be a political science major in order to get involved in EI. Um, last fall semester, um, myself and Professor Larson in the political science department, we co-led the Washington Connections program for EI. Um, during the semester, and it was a little different than normal. Normally, we would have multiple trips down to DC, um, but what we did, um, we leveraged the Gettysburg Alumni Network, and we had really interesting discussions uh, with, you know, boots on the ground policymakers in DC throughout the semester. Um, uh, we, let me think, we had the RNC communications director talked directly one on one with students. And the way it normally goes is there's a general kind of formal presentation of the speaker, but then there's these one on one informal communications that, you know, are a way of building your network. Um, and this was a Gettysburg alum. Um, RNC research director, chief of staff for Nancy Pelosi, all of these were Gettysburg alums. So the connections that you can make through these programs are really significant. Um, uh, and the, the other question that I can tackle is about the Fielding Center. So the Fielding Center is, is within the umbrella of EI, but it's a significant, um, it's a significant program within EI. Um, so Fred Fielding is a very famous uh, alumni of, Gettys of Gettysburg College. Um, he uh, started a, a, we started a center in his name and uh, each year um, through an application process of uh, fielding fellows are chosen um, and a team of fielding fellows each year tackles a state department grant. Um, I know that we're going through the State Department um, application process right now, and we're looking at uh, grants over in Finland um, and in the Netherlands also. And hopefully, if everything gets back to normal around this time next year, uh, we'll be traveling over to, to Finland or the Netherlands, depending on which one we are uh, approved for and get accepted. Um, but it's awfully fun. Um, beyond that, it does center on the, the uh, presidential uh, studies. So we have presidential scholars come in uh, quite frequently throughout the semester. You get to meet these folks one on one, have dinner with them, in addition to attending their formal lectures. So it's quite fun. Um, you know, the opportunities for engagement are, are significant. 
How easy for how easy is it to tag along with the re, with the research being conducted by a professor? Anthony or Juliana, do you have an uh, answer to that one? I, I can't. I, I'm not sure about the research part yet, but I can't answer the other question from the the panel uh, from the attendees. Um, so one of the questions that I'm, I'm seeing on the uh, I guess the chat or the, the Q and A section is how much overlap in terms of courses is there between political science major and public policy major? So um, I think Professor Hartzell could, I guess, kind of confirm what I'm saying here, but I don't, um, so I believe there are three courses I can use um, from like political science department to like uh, public policy, uh, two. Yeah, so I believe, yeah, for example, you know, I, I think I use my I, uh, IR class or maybe compared to politics class. Um, and there are, uh, political science courses that I think satisfy the public policy major requirement. Um, and I believe the North-South Dialogue is one of them because I think they are specifically constant. I think it might be a new thing, but uh, I think public policy has like these concentration thing you can kind of follow, like kind of route. So, uh, and there are political science classes are available to take to, I guess, to match that. So um, yeah, like, I will say they are pretty good, you know, overlap in terms of um, you know, courses between the political science major and public policy major. So here's a, here's a question for the students, um, and then I can answer one that's also about research. But for the students, um, what has been your favorite course you've taken at Gettysburg and why? And so this is a loaded question because they've both taken classes with me. So I'm just telling you, you do not have to say it's my class. Ha. <laughs> um, right. I, can, I can answer that. Um, I do, I actually, I am being honest here and I do think that it was the capstone that I took with you, Professor Hartzell. Um, but I think that's because um, it's kind of like the culmination of the political science major. Um, and so I found like, as I was taking that class, um, I was really able to like reflect on what I've learned for the past four years and um, use that to explore a topic um, that I was interested in, which was, which is um, the effects of economic and political globalization on democracy. Um, and so I was able through that capstone to um, conduct uh, quantitative research on that topic. Um, and I wrote my capstone paper and it was um, then published on the cupola, which is our, um, like the Gettysburg College um, academic uh, research publication site. Um, I don't know if that's the technical term for it, but um, and yeah. So through that um, through that capstone, I I just really enjoyed like being able to think about you know the different classes that I had taken across departments and across countries um, at Gettysburg, and being able to apply that to a research question because I'm a sucker for research. So. <laughs> I can kind of add on to, I guess, I can also answer the question about what was my favorite class. I wouldn't say necessarily favorite class. I mean, honestly, I don't think I've ever, I mean, all my classes, class I've been taking so far have been amazing. But if I were to just choose one, I'll probably say the intro to IR course, I took it in fall 2019. Um, I think that was with Professor Hartzell. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I've never taken classes like that, like even in high school and, you know, and I got me open, I was able to understand, you know, how international relations really work. Um, and, you know, and the, now that I'm taking the North-South Dialogue class, it helps me to, you know, apply some of the stuff that I learned in, you know, IR class to, in trial class to the class I'm taking now. And then it also, you know, when I read like articles online or whatever like that, um, it helps me to better understand the concepts and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I will say, um, IR, intro to IR class that I took in uh, fall 2019. Um, okay, I swear I didn't pay them to say this either. So just so everyone knows that. Um, uh, we have a question that asks, um, how easy is it to tag along with research being conducted by a professor? Um, and so there are a variety of ways to participate in research with a faculty member. Again, in addition to what Professor Bottery said, to have us mentor you in your own research, right? Um, we can ask you as well to participate in our research. So 
I've been at Gettysburg a lot longer than five years than the five years that Professor Baudry has. And I have had so many students work for me as a research assistant over that time that I literally actually don't know how many students I've had work with me. My research is on civil wars, not the civil war battlefields that sit on right outside our doors at Gettysburg College. I, I do research on uh, civil wars cross nationally in the post-World War II period, and in particular, how those civil wars end, and then the effects that has on uh, topics ranging from democratization to women's rights to economic development in the post-war context. Um, and I've had a number of students, as I said, um, work with me as a research assistant. So if you work as a research assistant, you get paid for that work. It can range from things um, such as helping me um, find materials that uh, will produce part of the literature review, for example, of, a, of, of an article or books that I've written. Um, it can be, um, I've had students help me do coding um, for my um, data sets that I've created relevant to my um, cross-national analysis. So students have done that as well. Um, I've had students uh, go then beyond being a research assistant. So after being a research assistant, they are hooked and you know they, they, they drank the Kool-Aid and they wanna do more. Um, I've had students that uh, have written conference papers, co-authored conference papers with me and that I've actually taken them to a couple of national political science conferences with me. I have had um, a student that, I, that was a co-author on an article that um, was published in a major journal and that I still assigned to the state to one of my classes to read. Um, and uh, the former student, now faculty member in our department, she and I continue to work on research. I continue to work on research with other students who have gone on to PhD programs elsewhere. So that's just a, an example of kind of a cross section of the kinds of ways that you can actually participate with faculty members. Um, it could be that a faculty member senses your interest from the class and reaches out to you and asks you if you're interested. If they don't do that, you reach out to them. There is nothing more flattering to a faculty member than for a student to say what you do, you know, I think it's cool and I'd like to be part of it. Um, and so that is definitely one way you can, um, you know, cross over with a faculty member in terms of participating on research. Yeah, and I'll just echo that point. I think that if you're if you're interested and, and you want to put in the work, it's just a simple discussion with the professor. And um, we're always um, very open to to conducting research um, with with our students. I'm, I currently am polishing up a manuscript with two students. One is now an alumni, um, but we, we conducted an experiment around the Amy Coney Barrett uh, nomination uh, in the fall. And uh, our hope is uh, to send that out to journals soon. Um, it's well along at this point. So yeah, the, the opportunities are, are ever present really. We still have about 10 more minutes. So um, we'd love to have more questions from you. I'll just add that I know that questions always pop up, at least for me, after the fact. So if something comes up and you have a, a question, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm gonna put my email address in the chat and any question, no matter how small, please feel free to, to shoot us an email. I'd be happy to talk to you uh, through email that way. Thank you. And thank you to all of our panelists uh, this evening. Uh, thank you for those tuning in. Um, again, as Scott said, um, and the students are willing to, to help you through this decision process. Our professors are there for you. So please reach out um, and get those questions answered. Uh, as well, your admissions counselor is happy, happy to answer any questions. So have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and please catch our other virtual events uh, to help you make your final decision. Congratulations again, and we hope to see you on campus.